Welcome to Two Cents, the <laughs> after <laughs> show <laughs> for dollar reviews. What are you doing? That was like one of those uh, news ticker type things. <laughs> Man, we need to have. Do you have a buddy that can like do music for us? I I, uh, we I don't know if they would do it, but you yeah, gotta put I, out I an ad some, for that. I have some musically uh, inclined friends that would probably do it actually. Yeah, we maybe remember, like Akko Akko. Uh, uh, what's the word? Where you sing without music? Please don't acapella, tell me you're no. making acapella, pitch We're not doing song. that. No. Akko don't. Akko don't. Okay. Dude, 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 I said that, that is, I, I'm ashamed I to know what that reference that is. That was one of my Aqua favorite parts. Of that ever, I mean, I've talked about this too many times now, uh, but the opening, the Universal logo, when they were, did the acapella version, I thought that was really Yeah, cute. I didn't see the movie, so I don't care. Oh. I thought it was cute, though. Yeah, I don't it was care. Cool. Dun, dun, dun. I don't care. Welcome to Two Cents, the after show to dollar reviews, where we cover film news, movies, or TV that we've been watching, and just general observations of the industry that we have. It's like, guys, it's, it's less about inside and more about what we want. Oh, well, guys, I have. How about both? You know what? Trip. I have an observation here. This is something that, after Jurassic World, I'm kind of getting a little worried about. Colin Trevorrow, mm-hmm. this is his second film, right? Yeah. His first was Safety Not Guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Uh, From Sundance yeah. to Spielberg, I think, yeah. is the line that THR is using right now. It's a pretty big jump, right? Just yeah. you got a new talent that's been proven that has promising talent up ahead and gets thrown into blockbuster territory right In away. In a bad way. Yeah. It's, happened. Uh, it's also happened before with uh-huh. Gareth Edwards, who did Monsters. Yeah, and, and then, then he jumped to Godzilla. And After that, Rogue he's Nation. got Rogue One, uh, Rogue and One. then he's going back to Godzilla 2. Wait, he's doing the Godzilla 2? Uh, yeah, uh, Legendary's willing to wait for him after he does Rogue One. I think they're sense. slated for 2018. I'm, not, um, I'm actually excited for that. Yeah. Because I'm in. <laughs> the Mission Impossible 1. No, no, another no. one, though. Mark Webb, 500 Days of Summer, jumps Spider-Man. to Amazing Spider-Man. Josh Trank, not independent, but Was Chronicle that, was still a low-budget film. Low budget. Jumps right to Fantastic, Fantastic Four, Four and then booted off of Star yeah. Wars. Uh, James Gunn did a bunch of indies and then got thrown into Guardians of the Galaxy. Because of Super. I mean, Super, it, I still don't, I don't think that movie works, but yeah. No, I don't either. It, it, and then, yeah, yeah Slither's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, still though. a nice, you know, awesome. low-budget movie is, you know, kind of a fun genre yeah, film. Yeah, going from trauma pictures yeah. to this to that to... Then you got Ryan now. Johnson, you know, did his own thing for a while with, you know, ended up with Looper, and then that he's, got him... I, I don't know. I now he's doing Star him. Wars. Yeah, he's anyway, doing the, the Star Wars. The, yeah, but, but here's yeah. the point that I'm getting at is... You got all these guys doing their thing at a very small budget, you know, and, and it's getting everybody's attention in the Balloon mainstream. It's huge. And they get brought Tent into pole. major franchises. That now, I mean, it started a while ago though, but it's been happening definitely a lot but more th- this recently. This is yeah, this is what I'm worried about is that you know, look at Gareth Edwards specifically. He knows exactly he's working on a Star Wars film right now and he's already got another franchise lined mm-hmm. up to continue with Godzilla. I'm worried here that you got these guys that have, you know, that Great are talented vision. and they have promise and they they may not necessarily be getting the chance no. to work on their original visions. Mark Webb was supposed to do a movie for Fox Searchlight. I think after he's still going to do one. Summer. I think now he's going to probably do it because they canceled Amazing Spider-Man yeah, 3. Yeah, you, you heard about this, right? The reason he was supposed to do it after yeah, the first you know. Spider-Man and that's why... Uh, and then that got delayed because of Amazing Spider-Man 2. Well, not that. I mean... Uh, he was supposed to do the film in between the spider man and then he, the reason, or not the reason, but the way that Fox kind of fixed that snafu was they said, okay, Sony, you're going to put our X-Men Days of Future Past thing at the end of your film as like one of those Marvel uh, teasers, and they said, yeah, that's good, that works, and that was, that got him out of his contract. That's how they got it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's, but yeah, anyway, the point I'm making is that this is something that I just kind of worry about, um, even... Oh, yeah, here's another name, Neil Blomkamp, who was, you know, he kept himself out of the conversation and, you know, he wanted Still to do his own stuff <laughs> with stuff like Elysium and Chappie. And even though those are not movies that I like that District much, you know, Nine. I at least like that he's doing his own original stuff. Yeah. At, now at, he's doing he's, Alien. But then, but that might be good, though. It might be good. It could be good, but it's quite a jump but that's, from what is. That's it, not it, what he's I'm on the jump, too, yeah. But here's what I'm getting at, is that that's the main point I'm making. These guys are doing their own original stuff, and then they get brought into franchises, and, you know, it seems like there's no end in sight, specifically Josh Trank. I think before he got taken off Star Wars, he was going to have that, and I think he was doing Fantastic Four, too. Yeah, he was going to... Uh, uh, maybe. He's... I Based off of the way that he got booted off of Star Wars and the kind of the things that I've read about him on Fantastic Four, I highly doubt, unless this thing is a monster hit, which it probably won't be, just because of Fox's uh, track record with Marvel properties outside of X-Men. Uh, I don't see it. 
Um, I guess just the main thing that I'm asking here is like, am I kind of crazy to worry about this? No. Because it just seems like, you know, once these guys get brought into franchises, they get locked in for sequel to sequel. And they and... never do the real thing again. Yeah, yeah I mean, when was the last time we ideas. saw an original movie from Mark Webb that wasn't, and that, that was only 500 Days of Summer, and that was already six years ago? The crazy thing about that film was, like, the zeitgeist. That was not on its initial release. I did see it before it went wide. I made my dad drive me all the way out to the Grove to watch it. I loved it. I loved it before anyone else did. Mm -hmm. I saw the trailer and went, I got to see this. And sure enough, everyone else felt that way because it's not just the directors. Look at who's in that film. You got Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who went from that. I mean, he was already a good name because of Third Rock of the Sun and mm -hmm. 10 Things I Hate About You and these small things. But then he went to do Batman uh, Dark Knight Rises, and he did this, and now, you know, he's triple-A actor with this and that. But He's even... not a reoccurring character in any franchise. No, no. Uh, not, not yet. I'm sure he's going to be. Um, but more importantly, you got Zoe Deschanel, her similar kind of background, and now she's on a super hit syndicated sitcom on Fox, um, and she doesn't do anything. But now. it's not; they're not; those are not established properties. No, I don't mean properties. They're not getting locked into like franchises that already are long existing. That are I think you know, it's that just studios are just trying to milk out the how hot indie is. Okay, you got indie filmmakers, indie musicians, whatever, anything indie, comic books, whatever it is. And there's, like, some zeitgeist that are, that's in, you know, that's hot. We want that. Um, that They want that to bring do it to their own thing. Yes. Yeah. And that's a problem. Because when you throw money at something, it's not indie anymore. But the consumers, that they don't care about there. that. Like, I do think, you know, for creative, for Amazing Spider-Man, I do, you can tell that that is a Mark Webb film. At least in some, you're shaking your head. Come on. Come on. I'm still dissatisfied, and obviously the world is too because they already rebooted that reboot, or they're about to they're anyway. About to. They had to sell, not sell, but they had to lease the property to Marvel. Um, I think he fucked up. I thought the first one was okay, but I he clearly fucked up, and Sony agrees. And now who knows what he's doing? Maybe his career's over. I hope not. But no, no, no. It's not over. It's do you, not. Do you, do you think he was just tired? Amazing Spider-Man Two. Okay, guys. Amazing Spider-Man Two. Made ass loads of cash. It did not make as much as they wanted. It didn't hit the billion dollar mark. You got Big Paul deal. Giamatti doing a Russian Seven accent in over... a metal rhino suit, though. Yeah, which was hilarious. I mean, that was awesome. It's Guys, not supposed to be the hilarious. movie made over half a billion dollars. It did fine. It wasn't the big monster that they wanted that necessarily just automatically meant that they should have made a sequel to that. But it did fine. You know, it's not the disaster that everyone makes it out to be. I really didn't it's like no that It's no Tomorrowland. Movie. Financially that, speaking. That's uh, geared to lose 100 plus million already. Yeah. Which is, I mean, anyone that's seen it can see why. Is, okay, but I mean, I'm just saying Amazing Spider-Man 2, not the total clusterfuck that everyone makes it out to be. Yeah, I, I agree with you. <laughs> Even though I never, I, I saw the first uh, Mark Webb Spider-Man movie, but I didn't see the sequel. It's, it's whatever. I love the movie. Well, we'll do an audio commentary well, on it sometime. No, I will defend no. that. Oh my! There is so much. I do like Andrew in some Garfield. ways that I I love Andrew Garfield and the very little I've seen of him, and I love him being Spider Man. That movie but gets the joy of Spider -Man. Spider Man. That movie gets the joy of Spider Man right more so than any of the other films. I the best thing about Spider Man is him being Spidey. It's the mm -hmm. way he talks to yeah. his villains, the way he talks to people. That very almost campy nature. Um, which I hope they do really well in Deadpool because Deadpool is a similar character. Yeah. And based off of Ryan Reynolds' like enthusiasm for the project and the property, I'm pretty sure it's going to be good. I hope it's good. It's a hard, a hard R uh, comic movie, which never happens. Uh, Deadpool's looking more of an amazing character. Did you ever? Did you see the uh, CGI? Yeah, the test. It looked good. Yeah, it looked really fun. Yeah. So I, I hope yeah. that's good. We'll find out early next year. I think it's a February movie, so that's a bad sign. But no, anyway. no, no. It's it's got that slot. You know why? Because it's an R-rated film, and it's got the same weekend yeah. as Kingsman. And Kingsman did well. So it did that's, well. That's got to be a pretty good spot. In which I saw Kingsman this past week. I saw that. What do you think? I'm gonna jump back to that in a second. I also saw Spy. Yeah, yesterday. thanks. By the way. And they are similar films, except Spy is better. Oh. Everyone loved Kingsman. Now I feel bad that I didn't get to see it and we didn't get to review you it, You can man. still see it. It's still in theaters. All right. I, I, I highly recommend about. watching it. I loved it. It was really funny. It did the same kind of concept. You know, it's playing on the rules of the spy genre. It's not necessarily a spoof because it's still kind of serious, but it's definitely a comedy and it, it's real loose and fast with itself. 
And whereas Kingsman, you know, it's a comic book property and it's, it's about a kid and, and there, it's very haphazard. There's a lot of stuff that it doesn't do. Like there's no chase, chase sequence. Like there's a sex scene, but I watched the British uh, version. So the, the anal sex joke was actually cut out of it. So I had to go like online and read what, what it was. Yeah. When she's like, when you come back, I'll do more than kiss you. No, it was I'll cut let out you of the fuck you, you in my saw. ass. Yeah, it was. It wasn't in the film. Was this the spy movie? Because that, yeah. No, this is in King. Kingsman. Yeah. yeah, it's that. It's like the last thing in the film. Um, oh, and it's yeah. supposed to be hilarious, and I wouldn't know. I'll have to. Re- well, I'm curious to find that you say that Spy is better. I mean, Spy's I better. just based on what I saw, because Kingsman was a crazy no, I'm with you on deconstruction this. and just subversion. Well, I wouldn't of the go that genre. far. I mean, oh, it's, it's in the film the they say twice. Out of the spy genre. Twice they say this is in that film. It yeah. was funny, the but they first subvert time. the hell out of that, man. They really go in places that you do not expect. And they I, do. I give you that, and that's more just with Samuel L. Jackson's character. But I didn't think it deconstructed the genre that well. I, I thought it was great entertainment, but like I said, it doesn't well, have it's a chase scene. It's not deconstructed as well as Kick Ass, but it really play. It just goes. It in plays with it, yeah. You don't and expect Spy, it to go. I think, does it a much better way, and that might be because I wasn't expecting it. Everyone on the line was talking about Kingsman. You know, I missed it when it came out. It's February now. It's June. Too busy watching Fifty Shades of Grey. I don't know why you would do that. I watch a lot of things. I've seen all the Twilight. Oh, I watch films. a lot of stuff too. Doesn't mean that I have to watch. Everything. Hey, I've seen all the Twilight films, so. Uh, all right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, Spy, really funny. I don't really even awesome. like Melissa McCarthy. I saw the trailer and went, I don't want to do it. Like, we have this talk on Spy. Which I, yeah, man. And I was just, kind of willing to yeah, see Yeah, last it. night I was like, I kind of want, or yesterday. I got out early yesterday. I love from work. Bridesmaids. I was willing to give it a shot. Right? Yeah. I skipped the heat because I heard bad things. And so I, I'm like, what else is playing right now? And Spy was the only thing playing yesterday. Sat in it from beginning and I was laughing, I was smiling. It just does a really good job. It wasn't what the trailer makes it out to be. It's not Melissa McCarthy being a joke who's somehow in the field. Like, she's qualified. She's good. She's even better than the guys. And, like, she's not the incompetent, like, lazy uh, dumbass like she is in most films. This is her being a real um, hardworking, smart girl who just never got the opportunity. And That's kind of refreshing. It it was refreshing. I feel so much better that I missed the review. I'm just saying, like I, I enjoy. I'll try it. to get to it. I hey, recommend it to most people out there. Hit me up. All right, you guys could go. I think you're both gonna like it. It's oh. funny. Jason Statham's hilarious in it. Like, <laughs> real funny. I'm actually gonna laugh a lot. Well, yeah, speaking of uh, Paul Fig movies, um, did you hear the news about Ghostbusters? Yeah, uh, Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth is the receptionist. Yeah, I like. I that. like. Yeah. I like how he's rebooting his like uh, his career. Yeah, he's the vacation spot, which most people have Don't seen in the trailer. Think, uh, Secretary for uh, Chris Hemsworth is a little bit, little bit below him. Shouldn't he be no. like a no, character no. that's a little bit higher in this Have case? you seen anything he's been in besides the Thor films and Avengers? Mm, uh, the Cabin in the Woods. Okay, yeah, he's in, he's barely in that, but yeah. It was a really good movie. I don't think he's solidified himself in Hollywood yet to be at a below him yet. Plus, the the receptionist... Well, no, in... He's always been in like a very you know macho role every time. Yeah, besides Rush. Yeah. I, I, I liked him in I Rush. love Rush, yeah. Um, I never saw that. It's good. It's a great biopic. Uh, but I, the receptionist is actually, you know, pretty pivotal in the first, maybe not the second film, but in the first Gals film. Pastas, what do you want? Yeah, and I think that he would be good I don't think he's going to do the Brooklyn accent. But... No, I'm not sure he can do one. He's not the, the best actor out there. Um, but look look at uh, hey, man, Avengers you know, and hey, the first Hey, his story. opening scene in Star Trek, man. Oh, yeah, he played uh, Kirk's dad. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. A lot of emotion there, man. Uh, yeah, he did pretty great in those like three minutes. I think he's a very underrated actor. It's just he hasn't done anything yet that people really rally behind. No, him. no, he's still in the movie star. Not, yeah, status, yeah, yeah. He'll find his. Rush is like one of the the first ones yeah. that Breakout? does have a star next to it because he mm-hmm. he was very good in it. Yeah, though he had two films where he was the star in it: Thor one and Thor two. Uh, Thor two wasn't out yet when Rush came out, I believe. Oh, uh, same year. It was the same year. Came out later. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Thor 2 is not good, so... It's all right. It's all right. Yeah, it, you know, lower dark, tier Marvel. It's dark note on the Marvel calendar. It's like Iron Man 2 at the bottom, and Thor 2 is just a little bit higher than that. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like tied with Incredible Hulk for me. Yeah, just a little, yeah I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. And I the mean, bottom the, three. Iron Man 2 is at the bottom, and then like Thor 2 and Incredible Hulk, but they're Similar. fun. They're, they're decent escapes. See, I like Tim Roth and Hulk. I'd, yeah, no, no. I like, yeah. I'd, I'd watch him again on an airplane, you know. Like, there's stuff in there where I go, I, there's stuff I like, but it's not something I go to revisit often. Uh, so, yeah, besides yeah. by, I've also been watching the second season of Broad City this past week. 
Um, I really like the first season. I watch it all like in two days, and uh, I'm at that pace for the second season. Great show. Um, it kind of does what the first season of Girls did. I don't know if you guys saw that on HBO. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. The first season. I'm caught up on that. The first season is great. Yeah. It's amazing. Broad City. Uh, well, well, Broad City, but I mean Girls, and that you know the first season is why Lena Dunham became the It Girl, and then ever since then, especially this past season, season four was a travesty. It was just a lot of shit going on that didn't work. Um, whereas Broad, I just want to fucking kill everybody. Exactly right. Like the characters are becoming. No one is sympathetic. How is it? Uh, well, it has like a Seinfeld thing going on, but it's more of a drama. It it doesn't. The show doesn't make sense anymore. She doesn't make sense anymore. Um, like I was riding, I was talking on the internet, like the first, the, the best episode of this past season was the first one that she didn't direct, which I think was the third one. Um, but yeah, the, the jokes just, it, it's, I still watch it, but I don't want to, whereas Broad City, it's just, I, and the, the connection isn't just because they're central to, uh, female characters or that the team behind it are women uh, or that's New York. It's just, it, it's kind of. It's interesting, especially for me as a male audience, uh, to watch it. And for, especially in terms of Broad City, it's not about women doing these things. It's just about funny people doing things. Yeah. And th- that's why I like it. I've, I've been enjoying it the second season. Hamid, what have you been up to? Uh, I was, I this tonight I watched uh, Axel Cop. What? Which is a, uh, uh, Axel, okay. a- Axe Cop. Oh, I, uh, I thought that was like a Beverly Hills Cop type thing going on. No, uh, where the, the cop was like, Axe Spray, you thug, and that's what... Uh, never mind. So, yeah, uh, it's... it's you sure uh, it wasn't an Axe commercial you were watching? I don't know. I don't know. No, it was a cartoon starring Nick uh, Offerman with a great, amazing mustache. Mm. Uh, it was a funny... Uh, the, it was written by a five-year-old and 28-year-old, the, uh, the script... Um, and it's about a, a cop who is, has an axe, and he uh, he's a superhero, and it's funny, and I enjoyed it. Uh, it's not aired on Fox. I don't have anything to say beyond that. It's like uh, it's worth checking out, though. Yeah, it's kind of, it has like kind of a Cartoon Network. Adult Adult Swim Swim vibe. That's what they but, do on Fox now, the animation domination thing. Yeah, oh. I was surprised that it's on Saturday now instead of Sunday. Uh, yeah, they have that other block. It's like Sundays, like their primetime stuff, you know, Family Guy, yeah. uh, Simpsons, and then... Oh, it's Sunday fun day now. Yeah, Sunday fun day. Of course, they got Bob's Burgers, and Saturdays, like, they're, let's try something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then there was this other uh, cartoon series with this uh, de- demonic girl and uh, her demon friend, which was uh, a funny uh, cartoon as well. Hmm. But I can't really elaborate. What about more uh, interactive media? You guys been doing anything with the video? Uh, video? GTA Five. I've been playing a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm also looking forward really to the Oculus Rift. If anybody, oh, you, you know, you actually, that this week. Yeah, I did dabble into uh, the Xbox 360 a little recently. Like I, oh, see, whoa. I don't, I don't it's play. Like a, that's like a time machine. I don't wow. play games that often. Well, you're, you like, are wearing a gaming headset. But yeah. I am wearing a gaming headset. Yeah, too. I am using a PS3 mic. No, so. but I don't play. And uh, I'm wearing a Nintendo. T-shirt. I'm not that hardcore into gaming, but basically, I went to my local library and, um, you know, I rewatched some. Uh, Disaster movies. I I'll get into that later. Yeah, so but, uh, you watch 2012 and 2012 and yeah, yeah uh, San Andreas. Maybe want to rewatch that. But I also just wandered into the video game section and I saw Red Dead Redemption. Was Great there, game. And I had never played it before. Yes, and so, so good. Yeah, well, I checked it out and I rented it for free from my library and. I played for about a couple hours and I had to return it. Uh, but you know, hey, I did. Cheap now. I did have fun playing for those couple hours. So I mean, it was a fun game. You can but... get a game of the year edition with all the DLC. It's probably used yeah. for like fifteen bucks. I it's a good game, but I never came up with a PC. So for a good reason. Yes, yeah, I'm bad What's at finding time to play games. Good, uh, good... Computers can't run horse simulation code. Some games are meant to be played with a controller. It's yeah. one of them. All right. Okay. No, it, no, but, it has nothing to do with that. It's just but you know, it's makes, funny. Anime... for Independence Day in 2012. Independence Day does not hold up for me. I disagree. Well, I mean, it really doesn't. The, the any special effects hold up for sure. Any fo- no, he disagrees. actually. Why? Yeah, so, yeah the, he didn't this, Okay, the CGI holds up. Or, no, it doesn't. Well, not okay. Up. The CGI does the not. The practical effects. Yeah, the, great. like that yeah. White House blowing up. Yeah. When that big fire destroys all those cars. You know, it's funny. That shot. I always thought it looked great in that teaser, and it looked horrible in the actual movie. 
What, the that White teaser, House? No, yeah, the White House. It's just the White House blowing up in the movie. Well, I mean, the teaser, they show the whole thing. A helicopter flies into the uh, foreground. Yeah, and, and it gets it caught in the fire. it just kills it. Yeah, like, you just don't get to soak in that explosion the same way. But, you know, I did kind of have fun. I, um, I have a 3D TV, and I just decided to use the auto-convert function. And watching incredibly fake sci-fi channel looking special yeah, effects. Yeah, those UFOs don't look good. But, you know, hey, the, I mean, that's fine for 1996. I can, I can accept that. It's kind of like sci-fi channel today. Yeah. Special effects. But watching those flipping cars in 3D was pretty cool with hey, those balls of flame. You get a Jew and a black guy saving the world. What else can you ask for? Welcome to Earth. Sequel's coming out. Will Smith's not going to be in it. What's the point? Jeff Goldblum, yeah. being in the sequel, kind of proves that he's the real hero, right? Basically. Because, I mean, Will Goldblum S- just needs a paycheck. Will Smith, the only thing he did was fly the ship. Anyone can do that. Jeff Goldblum hacked a UFO. Yeah. I mean, and just and took down he, the whole flight. Anyway, yeah, you know, Florida. Independence Day still very cheesy and it's supposed to be cheesy, you know, but it, which well, hey, the that's whole fine, Randy but it Quaid just doesn't, thing, man. That's it just doesn't. Horrible. Yeah, I don't know. In I good, enjoyed it more way. as a kid. But the movie that was really cheesy, but I still enjoyed the hell out of, was 2012. Oh, yeah, you talked Dude, about that movie's the fucking hilarious. It's like not. This. That's like, the that problem, though. Fun. I think that's no, why no, they no, make the money. It's a comedy. I mean, you know, he made when he made that. It wasn't 2012 yet, obviously. No, it was like 2010. Dude, uh, it, yeah, and you know, obviously, if the 10, apocalypse 10? didn't happen, they knew that the movie was not going to age well. I mean, that's probably the best route to go is just make it a comedy because after 2012, that movie's going to be fucking hilarious, and it is. But this is the thing. It's I remember so when it came out, it didn't make a lot of money and it was probably because it was a comedy no it made a shitload of money uh, worldwide yeah oh, oh yeah. It international uh, international yeah, counts the great thing about counts, hey, hey, it counts hey, now hey, hey no no international always counts there are other places than america my friend yeah exactly Wait, there are the great thing about 2012 <laughs> is that i thought it was made in such a way that it was that general audiences around the world would appreciate it more than the typical hollywood film uh there was a lot of uh participation from other countries not literally but there are a lot of uh, characters from other yeah. countries. Yeah, the, the you have the, you have that, the that does give you a great sense of like this is a world event. This is happening around the world, which it was the problem with San event. Andreas because yeah. it wasn't a global event. It wasn't no. even a tri-state event. It was two states barely. Well, yeah, yeah let's see that... if it plays well in China. I'm sure it will because The Rock, he's an international star. Yeah, well, is, is he you can't. Cooking the Rock is so likable, man. Like he you is. can't yeah, not. Yeah. You know, he does turn in a decent performance. Like I can't so wait much. for him to be a villain in Shazam. I think he's gonna make a black, a great Black Adam. Yeah. I think the world is gonna be like shocked by how well. That's a joke. By how well he <laughs> he plays a villain. He shoots lightning, but Black Adam. Yeah. Shazam. Uh, yeah. Shazam. Shazam. I've been playing uh, the worst in the series thus far. The of the Arkham series and playing uh, Batman Arkham Origins just because uh, I just bought that it just was... because Arkham Knight's coming out very soon yeah. I'm not gonna buy it when it does I'm gonna wait till Black Friday because I'm a Jew um, and $30 for a game is better than 60 I am also 50 but it's fun it, I mean the game it, it plays basically the same except it's super glitchy not super glitchy but it, it's okay it's not as good as Arkham City but just fun because it has a Christmas setting and so it has that whole lethal weapon uh what else uh kiss kiss bang bang thing going on where it's like die hard where it's like well this shouldn't be happening right now but it's still snowing you are still christmas carols and this the score is kind of interesting because you do hear some like sleigh bells and some some riffs on that my expectation my, my expectation for that game is now a little bit higher because like kiss kiss bang bang is a awesome no i wouldn't say it's that game. good i'm just saying the setting like oh, the, oh, the oh, time oh. the time it takes place on is expectations that true original no oh, yeah it's, it shouldn't exist I got it for like 20 bucks, so it's still a little bit too much. Let's uh, flash forward to uh, the new Star Wars movie for some reason. What, that's, what let's skip a little bit further than that. You guys read that uh, uh, Hateful Eight's going to be released in only 70 millimeter on Christmas? Uh, yeah, I, I expected them to do something like that. I think yeah. that's cool. I mean, you know, I, I figured he'd do go the Interstellar route and do a film only release pr- b- mm-hmm. more than a couple days. That's probably what Interstellar should have done. Yeah. If I'm happy have more that it did like that. its re release. A couple of months after it was done in theaters. In 70, did they do that? Yeah, they did 70 millimeter and IMAX re-release. They did it for like a couple of weeks. Uh, they didn't do that near me. But... Huh. Well, I didn't I didn't catch it, but I read no, it. No, I didn't hear anything about it. Hmm. Uh, no, nor did I. Yeah, hey, Liar. I still have low expectations based after Django. 
but uh, maybe you can do the Western. Yeah, you know, it's, again. it's a Tarantino, Tarantino movie. No. I I don't Fuck get no. excited for Tarantino anymore. He's he's achieved his peak, and this happens once directors hit their peak. Then I'll see whatever movie think, they have next. I don't expect them to turn in another masterpiece. Do you think you know? his uh, the passing of his long uh, time editor had anything to do with? The, That's all, what a lot of people said. Uh, your uh, what's her name? Uh, Sally uh, Mankey. Mankey, yeah. Yeah. Um, I I want to say it might have affected it, but no, a bad movie's a bad movie. Yeah, no, I, you know, and that's like saying you know. Are you oh, saying you know, Django's a bad movie? Yes. Oh. I'm saying I, I wrote a very in depth review. I have a podcast about it. It's way too long. It was supposed to be two films. Harvey Weinstein wanted to cut him in half, but he knew that that would be a mistake because to release two mo- movies takes costs twice as much as to release one. I thought the um, Leonardo DiCaprio was outacted by his fake teeth uh there are a lot of things you can read them i, I can post it on uh attached to this podcast but yeah i just didn't like yeah, I it i think it's a fun movie you know as far as yeah, just, the first yeah, half it's, it's is good fun. tarantino porn the first half is fun yeah it's a good uh interesting way to phrase it's better it, tarantino yeah. porn than death proof you know i mean it, okay yeah yeah, yeah. Well, i mean death proof is also you can't watch that movie on its own. Like no. I, I can't. No, I don't understand. I haven't seen. I don't know why they did the releases on DVD. Separately. Yeah, like I know that sense. he has his own cut of Death Proof. That's like two. Uh, it's thirty minutes longer, but they're both shitty movies. They work better as Grindhouse. Grindhouse is an experience yeah, where exactly. you just watch two really low quality films. That's the way to see it. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the way I'm going to keep watching that. Yeah, I doubt I'm going to rewatch it many times. But yeah, Death Proof and Django, same territory. It's. You know, Tarantino is the guy who makes these films, which are almost ripoffs of other films, and that's kind of what he's known for. He does great collages. That's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, it, it, there's, and he, he does it in his own way. There's collage, like Pulp Fiction, mm-hmm. and then there's Reservoir Dogs and Django, which are basically recreations of other films without go, without saying it. All right, example, Reservoir Dogs. What, what film? I can't remember the name of it. It's a Chinese film, not John Woo, but someone else. And it is the exact same premise. It's a bunch of jewel, th- a bunch of guys steal some diamonds, and shit goes bad during the robbery, and you find out that someone is an undercover cop. That is the plot. It came out like a year before Reservoir Dogs. There's lots of stuff on the internet about it. Django is literally using a character from a spaghetti western series, and using it as his own. But he, he kind of mentions that he puts the old Django in it. Inglorious Bastard stole the name from a different film. Like you know, he he started af- out literally stealing, and then he kind of became his own. And then he did an adaptation, Jackie Brown, which was his worst film until Django. Um, and yeah, after Inglorious Bastards, which I think most people agree is his masterpiece, it's very hard to live up to to that. And I don't know if he ever will. He he said something not too long ago about uh, he only has like one or two more films in him. Maybe he only said that because he knew people are only going to want to watch one or two more. Um, no, he said something like he wants to retire by the time he's 60. Yeah. yeah Which is very, he's like yeah, he 56. Does, he does it, yeah. You know, so, filmmaking's a young man's game, some along those lines, and he doesn't want to be one of those old guys that's just Or I've yeah. stolen so many he things cares that about I can't his steal film anymore. Life, yeah. Well, I, you, I, I I never observed that. I have a very movie. different experience with Tarantino. Yeah, though. I, mean, I, like, I love Tarantino. Yeah. Okay, I, I love every, him. Like we went to film school. Stuff. Everyone fucking loves Tarantino. I have no a, one. Yeah. Shut my the problem fuck up. I wish people yeah. would shut up. That's, that's, that's the thing, though. Class okay, lecture like, about one of his films. God, how many yeah. people do you like meet, and their favorite film is Pulp Fiction? Uh, How many people do you meet whose favorite film is Pulp Fiction where they don't get you know, the references school, in the film? Going to film school made me like Tarantino movies a lot less just because everyone's yeah. like, oh, Tarantino's oh. the greatest. I'm like, well, th- there's so much cooler stuff. Man. Yeah, well, like, I, I love, you know, that was like middle school for me discovering yeah. Kill Bill and Pulp Elementary Fiction. school yeah. for me. It, Tarantino <laughs> is the lazy film goers geeky. Like, it's... Well, that just, uh, that sounds way too... It, it, it doesn't. I don't. I don't think there's yeah. nothing wrong with his films except Django. No, it doesn't. I mean, you say lazy. Like, no. It's that implies like he's not putting any effort. No, no. In, he's know? not lazy. I'm saying the lazy film goer, the film goers who don't see much, and they like his stuff for the references and and this and that. Basically, like makes artsy films that are accessible to the public yes. in a the way. Artsy, yeah. artsy uh, popcorn flicks. Uh, sure. not bad like, that's, that's not a bad thing. That's, I guess that's a way of putting it. He still, know. even it doesn't matter if you love him, if you hate him, if you don't know who he is, you go and see his films every time they come out. 
And that's a good thing because we don't have a lot of those guys anymore. Um, but the problem with that, with those guys... And he's also, you know, he's not one of the guys that's getting locked into franchises like I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Which is, there's too few of those well, out I mean, there. He's a little too old and he's too notorious. No, but he's able renowned. to get a hundred plus million dollars to make oh, Django yeah. Unchained. I mean, come on, that's, that's pretty cool. I would love to live in a universe where he, like Kevin Smith almost did went to the dark side and helped make a studio mega movie. Um, Wasn't he supposed to do, like, a big studio movie? Like, some sort of Tarantino? superhero movie? Yeah. I, not that I know of. He almost did... Um, what was it? He It was like... It wasn't... I'm thinking here. It wasn't The Green Hornet, because Kevin Smith was supposed to do that. Mm-hmm. It was something else like that, like The Lone Ranger, or something like that, where he was interested. He was talking about it. Um, and that could have been interesting. I would have liked that. Uh, to see him on the other side of the spectrum. Um, but I don't... Speaking of Lone, Lone Ranger, I think I was the only one that liked that movie. I haven't seen it. I think I will like it. I want to see it. What did you see it? Meh. Yeah. I, you know, I... Standard I player. forgot I wanted to like it. Like, that. I don't ending. think it necessarily works. Don't say, hey, you don't, hey. Well, when the, uh, William Tell Overture kicked hey. in. That's all I'll say. That I think for the, the people that know about the kick, things kick that are good ass. about that movie, they've probably heard something about that. I wanna, I'm still going to watch it. I like Ari right. Hammer. He has really good charisma. The man from Uncle looks good because he's in it. Yeah, no, it's plus it's Gore Verbinski. You know, he's yeah. very underrated. Oh, I thought you were saying Man from Uncle. I was like, that's that's not no him. Gore Verbinski. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, very underrated dude. What else did he do? I know he did Mouse one of the pirates, pirates films. Rango, Mouse Hunt. I, I love the Rango. Weatherman. Mouse Hunt, dude. Yeah, one that of my movie's awesome. Movies. That movie's badass. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Ring is really good, man. I still haven't seen it. Uh, you know, it's dated because obviously we don't have VHS. Yeah. But it, well, I mean, I but mean, it's VHS, still a really good movie, man. VHS, the film still did pretty good, and no, we don't have VHS anymore. So. Yeah, well, that's hipsters. Man. What would be like the yeah. contemporary uh, Ring movie? It's like uh, well, they're like making YouTube a new links, They're like, making a new Ring, so you'll you find email out. YouTube links. It's to called. Each it's just other. called Rings. So I guess we'll find out. It's gonna be Snapchat. Mm. Yeah, it's gonna be like unfriended. It's just gonna be on Skype the whole time. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. Hey, that actually that movie did work though. That's I want to see it. Yeah. I'm so mad my theater stopped showing it. Unfriended. Yeah. No, it's well, now all on you, Skype. Hey, if you're gonna watch that movie on your laptop, that makes now sense. It's probably not it's perfect. I don't. You know, sound is a big part of that movie. Maybe. Yeah. It but is. watching that I have film, decent headphones, man. Watch. Well, I got decent headphones. But watching, watching that on a computer, I think would be the perfect experience. And it's probably made to do that. I bet you home media sales yeah. are gonna be amazing. It's definitely gonna be on Netflix. Uh, digital, yeah. Yeah, because. Sure. It just it makes sense yeah, watching a, a film that looks like watch it in the dark, man. It should watching be good, something yeah. that looks like a computer desktop on a computer desktop should be very meta. Yeah. It's like a first of its kind. Besides that Noah short film, I linked you to that. Did you watch it? Uh, I think you sent it to me, but no, I didn't. Watch you should it. watch it. It's like yeah. twelve minutes. I'm pretty sure they stole the premise from that film. It takes place on a computer desktop and Skype, Facebook, Google, whatever, and like it follows the mouse around the screen. It's done really well. Um, so you started talking about F seven. Uh, yeah. There's not much to talk about, but we can try. Uh, okay. The trailer looks fantastic. Which um, one? The newest one. The one yeah. with the, with the Star, Star Destroyer. Destroyer. Yeah. yeah, in the desert. On the planet that I can't remember the name of, yeah. Uh, Jakku? No, that's not Tatooine. It's a new planet. Jakku. It's Jakku. Oh, Jakku. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, the, the Jakku one with yeah. the, the Wolobolob species. No, it's a new planet. I know. I just made that species up. Uh, hence the planet. Anyways, yeah. So, like, yeah, it's a really good trailer. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm really excited to listen to a John Williams score. I don't know... Yeah, he hasn't done one in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think his last one was Indiana 4, right? No, 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 no. He did Lincoln. Did you Lincoln? Yeah, he's been uh, this. Yeah, he's done everything. It's like his first non Spielberg in forever, though. The one that's coming up, yeah, that's uh, that's Thomas Newman. Wait, did he do the other? Did he do the prequel trilogy? I want to say he did. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The uh, Duel, Duel of Fates, Fates man. Come yeah, on. one of the best songs uh, ever. I said three, I want to say Episode you did. 3 has an amazing score. Oh, yeah, too bad sure. the movie's not so good. No, I love that movie. I still love that it's movie. It's the best of the prequel it trilogy, is, yeah, but it's badass. still... No, right. it's not yeah, badass. If you're a prequel hater, the Younglings! Ah! That is a badass movie. If you take the prequels out of that, that's still an awesome movie, dude. Maybe. Yeah, that movie kicks ass. The, the only right. good thing... Not perfect, but that... Yeah. The only good thing... Well, not the only good thing, but and the no, best thing about hater. that film is that... That they finally almost kill Anakin. I was so happy that Hayden uh, Christensen almost died in that film. At least he was dismembered. I think he gets too much hate. I love when he's on the ground. He's like, coward. 
was a very emotional moment for me, man. Like, I, I was still, laughing. I still get showed up. A lot of that's for Johnny Williams. That shit was. I mean, funny. the music is great in that moment. No, yeah. No, no, I'm sorry. Hey, I. You know, I. I grew up on the prequels, man. Like, I have no choice but to look at those as kids movies. And yeah, as kids I'm, movies, yeah. those are pretty okay, fucking amazing. Given oh, yeah. I saw Phantom Menace is the first Star Wars yeah. film I watched. I think that goes for a lot of people our age. Nah, well, what? for you, that's yeah, you. Speaking, I saw yeah. the original. I saw the original. My, my parents don't do sci-fi, so I had very... No wonder you're... <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I had you very didn't watch awesome movies growing up. I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I did comedy. Your parents no, controlled what you were watching? At a certain age, your parents control everyone. I'll what they watch. for you. Parents yeah. didn't. I mean, they you know they just weren't interested, so they had no few, no inclination to watch, watch it, Terminator. and then they had no reason to show us. You know, parents show their kids certain things. That's why I'm looking not the one thing I look forward most of having kids, but having the experience of knowing that your son or your daughter's first time watching Back in the X, future. exactly whatever yeah, it is, amazing. and getting to experience it for the first time again with someone else. Yeah, like I look forward to bringing my kids to Disneyland for the first time. I think it's gonna be no. Nah, I don't give a shit about that. Tangent. I think that's gonna be horrible. I think. That I, you know, I'm gonna leave my wallet at home. Idea. Oh, I lost my credit cards. A good so, thing we bought our tickets in advance. Huh? Dude, Disney, we're going to Taco Bell. Huh? Yeah, seriously. Like, I, I, I'll get like uh, Mickey Mouse dollars, so I don't have to spend a cent. Okay, because there's no way I'm gonna spend it. Because I've seen it. Okay, when it's like, oh, let me get this balloon. Let me get this ice cream. Let me get this. It's like, okay, the ticket. I mean, this is you know, probably for us. I don't know if you guys use condoms. But, you know, like 20 plus years from now. So I'm sure the ticket alone is gonna be like 200 dollars. Yeah. Yeah, but welcome to Star Wars lands. Yeah. yeah, by the time that happens, uh... Avatar lands gonna be here too. So. Oh yeah, in Florida. No, I'm I'm sure it's probably gonna be here. They're gonna. No, there's not space to put Avatar land. In there's a lot of dead space parts. in California Adventure. Okay? Yeah. Mm, there's a lot of desert. That place is a shit places. show. Okay, California Adventure is a shit show. Yeah. The only reason people the go years. there is to get drunk. Period. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, and Starbucks. Go on Mickey's fun wheel if you know what I mean. I don't know what I mean by no, that. I don't, I was no. So we're in over California. Wheel. I don't know. The last time we did that, <laughs> those IMAX screens are horrible. It looks like it's from the 90s. Uh, yeah, they, they're they redoing that ride. So Good. it's a digital production instead of Makes uh, sense. Uh, IMAX, which is kind of a bummer because no. IMAX is higher quality than. No, when, like uh, I said, that, they got laser though, projection now. That, that screen have, looks like shit. What that looks like. I think it's like 4K or less, whereas IMAX is. My, uh, my theater had the DLP IMAX uh, 2K 4K. No, I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure it's 4K. Uh, 4K? 4K? No, 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 it's 2K. Two, two it so might have been 2K laser 3D. Projectors are 2K, yeah, but um, the IMAX digital projectors, those are 2K. It looked great. Before the laser projection. Before the film started, there was like an IMAX hype reel that showed you the 3D. Mm-hmm. And that was the only time that there was actual depth. Well, not depth, but extrusions. I mean, you've, you've seen that logo many times. No. Never, no? I've, oh, never, yep, seen, yeah. I've never seen an IMAX 3D film that had that. And oh, I was really? like, this is really what cool. Are we, what are we talking about now? Before, the IMAX 3D, the IMAX countdown. He does a countdown, and you're going through and you it. And that at a mini oh, yeah. too. So, man, you have it no idea so what's... so fucking good. Imagine the screen at the Spectrum. Yeah. No, I can, that I can imagine. That taking up the entire yeah. screen. Uh, well, when I saw the Tron Legacy, screen. it was a long time ago. Your entire peripheral vision is dominated. Yeah, it was some of the best 3D I've ever seen. My friend was, like, texting during... Or he's checking the basketball game score, and I, I just nudged him. I, was, I didn't say a word. I just went... <laughs> so, what are your guys' thoughts on the next Star Wars? I got no um, thoughts. It's either going to be amazing or it's going to be horrible. There's going to be no in between. I have, mm-hmm. well, I can't fathom the concept of it being horrible. Um, but it I have can't many be good. hyperbolic things that I could say. Exactly. But because it's 4 30 in the morning right now, I'm not going to embarrass myself right here. Uh, but that is the one movie this year that I'm looking forward to. I'm telling you, it's That's either going to be. All that matters right now is Star Wars. Everything else just. It's going to be shit, what, or it's going to be shut amazing. Up, shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> shut okay, up. Okay, is this a Black Eyed Peas song? My, my expectations are pretty high for this. It, it's for movies. everyone. They're, like... You know, after... I rewatched Star Trek recently. Okay. The, that uh, movie is... The remake? Yeah, the J.J. Abrams one. Yeah, the first one. If Star Wars gets a tenth of how fun that movie is, it's then... It's totally fun, yeah. Yeah, then it'll be fine. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. The I mean, problem is, it's hard to make a fun Star Wars movie. They're usually very serious. Besides Star Phantom Menace, dude, Star Wars. Star Wars is fun in, in period. It's not the original very Star Wars. At all. The first one, yeah. 
A lot of fun. Yeah, yeah the first one. A lot of fun. Ever since then, they haven't been. Not really. Fun seriousness a little bit. Well, yeah, yeah you know, well, here, yeah, here's yeah. the thing is... I think I the think, reason behind that fun is because it was supposed to be a one-off film. I do think that the choice of having J.J. Abrams works, like, you know, he can make a fun movie, and then you bring in Ryan Johnson to tell a story afterward. I hope so. so like, afterwards. And, but Ryan Johnson can also have fun. You know, they're both very playful yeah. directors. They love was... playing with the medium. That's why I think they're both great choices. They like doing things different that nobody else is really doing i was kind of surprised that jj wasn't going to do all three no movies. i'm not i want to i, I really want to see jj Abrams do his I, original stuff i want yeah um, not only that but i ryan johnson's been doing sci-fi well actually you know, besides looper i don't think he's done another sci-fi i la after looper i heard he was um i heard an interview where he was writing the next project he was working on was something that was sci-fi mm -hmm. and that it was uh cyber punk that cool. And this is before the Star Wars announcement, yeah. so, um, you know, but, but that, that could be why he's doing Star Wars, because what he wants to do might cost a lot more, and he needs more he needs cloud after end. that, yeah. so that could like, be it. But... My uh, review for Looper, like, it ended with, like, uh, blah, 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 let's see where he takes us next, and this is where he's taking us next, and I just think, I think Star Episode Eight is going to be a lot better than Episode Seven, and not in a, I'm not saying Episode Seven is going to be bad, I just I don't think J.J. Abrams is a great storyteller. No, he's he's a great showman. Yeah, he's a you showman, know, like, but he's not I, a storyteller. No, I you know he try like I do. I, I love I, Super Eight. I think J.J. Abrams is he's a great showman. He's, he's great with characters. His themes don't necessarily come together in the best way, Super especially with Super Eight, but. You know, he knows how to nail the emotional beats. He knows how to get you sucked in, and he knows you know he his movies. Um, with me, that Super 8 definitely resonated with me, even if, after the fact, I know that narratively it's not really perfect. No, but it, it does a really great job of making a modern day, well, not modern day, but uh, a, a, like an E.T. for our mm -hmm. generation. Yeah, yeah it does it, and it, doesn't, it does like, it really well. It, it may just like, be one of those movies without feeling like, oh, it's specifically mm -hmm. a throwback. It's like, no, it really feels yeah. like one of those movies. It's it good. gets did, the did, emotion of that. Did anybody play the video game trailer for Super 8? Yeah, I played it in Portal yeah. 2, yeah. Yeah, it's done. It's like a, it was one of the first uh, interactive uh, movie trailers. Mm -hmm. I avoided every piece of marketing for Super. It's good though. It you, out, you, so. It's like first person on the train before it crashes, mm -hmm. and there's nothing to do with the monster or anything, and it was just it was done it was really for well for the uh, train. Yeah, it's kind of fun. And uh, I think you also explore the. Uh, never mind. I'll no. think. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're gonna do something similar with Star Wars Battlefront. I, I bet you there's going to be like an interactive trailer is for it. Is that going to be a movie or a video game? It's a video game. Video it's game. made by EA. The same right. people that did the other Battlefront games. It's the same thing, but it's new. Mm. Um, even though it, like, it's like super small, there's no story mode. But Jagu is one of the planets that you can play on. I don't know. It might be good. It might flop. Who knows? EA Sports. I mean, Star EA Wars, needs man. It. It's not going to flop. Did you guys ever play uh, the... The old Star Wars, the, the, the Super Star Wars. Oh uh, yeah, I, I, I couldn't do it. You didn't gonna do it? I couldn't do it. I couldn't, oh, I couldn't get so into it. I, I think I played like ten hours. I went, I'm, I'm over this. Well, ten hours is enough. No, like like to to beat that game, you need to invest like 170. Something like that. Yeah, so I I played almost like just a little less than a tenth of it. Mm. No, I didn't. No. I was like, how long does it take to make your own lightsaber? I went online, it was like 20 hours. I was like, fuck that, I just want my own lightsaber. Hours. No, that's... It was something like that. I was like, I just want a lightsaber. I was like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I was yeah. tired of walking around with my blaster. I was like, this is stupid. No one wants to be Han... Well, okay, people want to be Han Solo, but no one wants to be just someone with a blaster. It was a fun game. Also, the sequel was pretty good. Did you ever play that? No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hold up anymore. It's like an MMORPG without oh, the, the graphics MMO. Oh, the graphics don't hold up, but I think the writing is a little... It's like playing Skyrim on a shittier platform. I don't mean that in a good way. Like, it, it, you know, it's not first person. Maybe. It's an interesting RPG. Uh, okay, you Use your go. words. What do you want to say? You go. Idea what to talk about. Or what? No, I, I got, well, I got no more. It, I got no, yeah, I got no two cents. All right. I talked about Spy. Hamid, you if know, I, was, all right, Hamid. If Internet was open right I, now, would you want any? Uh, no, because oh, I had a big dinner before I came here. <laughs> Hamid. You're the biggest Back to the Future fan that's that true. I know, possibly of all time. Nah, I doubt uh, that. Not of all time. He doesn't own a DeLorean. All right. Well, well, so yeah, based... I don't have fifty or uh, eighty thousand right. dollars. Right. Based right. on I, that I alone, just, just, just tell me what, 
like, what is it about that movie that speaks to you? What isn't it you, about that movie? I'm sorry. Like, how did you first experience that? How did that? How did that movie? Uh, I had the VH, v, VHS tapes growing up, so mm -hmm. I was always in rotation on a daily basis on my TV, along with uh, Beetlejuice and uh, Big Top Pee Wee. But, uh, so I don't think I've seen Big Top, believe it or not. It's on uh, Netflix. I don't, I don't think I've I seen it. I don't even know what that is. First one. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big, big Adventure. Big Adventure. Yeah, it's not Tim Burton, someone else. Yeah. I don't know what either of those are. Uh, you know, so Pee Wee Herman? P Pee Wee Herman Adventure? Paul Rubens. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, no, no, I know what that is. I, I yeah, he had a movie. Big, big Adventure. Yeah, that's Big right. Adventure. Okay. Yeah. That's a, that's and a Big Top. title. Yeah, yeah Big Top Pee Wee is the second the film, film, not with Tim Burton, because he went on to do Beale Yeah, Jobs. but Danny Elfman was still uh, oh, okay. doing this. Oh, yeah, I don't think I've seen it. I might have. It's, I know it's on Netflix, I just haven't. Yeah, it's, it's worth a watch. It's like, that's like, where it's like, it's oh. a new one, by the way. It's going to be on Netflix. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's I have no idea how that's going to I out. saw the Pee Wee's Playhouse live show. It was on HBO. Uh -huh. That was real fun. Mm -hmm. So if it's even a quarter as fun as that, it's going to be it's going to be a good watch. Well, nice. So so um yeah, uh well one, the soundtrack to Back to the Future was perfect. Fucking awesome. I remember growing it's perfect. It it is perfect. I remember growing up as a kid listening to Radio Disney and I was like uh. calling in. I was like <laughs> Hey, can you play the Back to the Future main title theme by Archivestry? And they didn't. They didn't. Wait, Wait what? Like, old man text. Don't, don't you know? <laughs> That's why I was sounding like. Don't you know that Radio Disney, Disney only plays Disney music? Yeah, I. Well, I but I was a kid. I was like, uh, sure, they play uh, whatever the Miley Cyrus. Did you ever Brooklyn get them the to play it? No, hell no. No, no. I'm not no, sure no, they no. could. Yeah, they didn't have like. He's like, yeah, that's. Our, someone's tuned into our AM station and list some, listen to some composed music at five in five in the night. Exactly, all it's five PM. That's listen to composing. All they had was like the Hanson CDs yeah. and yeah, exactly. nothing else. They didn't have the, the soundtrack to the best movie of the '85. It was that time. Travel. I mean, at this point, they still had those Disney Adventure like mini comic books. Those were actually pretty good. I like yeah. those. I like those Disney uh, Adventures. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's the also the DeLorean. It's fucking awesome. It's like oh, one yes. of the best. Uh, well, worst worst production cars, but yeah, best. Best uh, allegedly shitty cars to drive, but uh, no, best. not to drive. Just lots of things that were wrong with them. Uh, for a lot of people, I think it was like the the there defroster. Was, like, in some of them. Yeah, the, that too. But it was like the defroster, and like there's something wrong with like the windshield blades and the windows and lots of stuff. Yeah, uh, but ignoring that, it was like uh, it's iconic. It's only I think it's only that. an iconic car because of the movies, though. Uh, you... Come I mean, on, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, without the movies, the car. I mean, it would have been just a product car. of popular culture. Well, for yeah, one thing, the, the car company what a only looks like because of Back to the Future. It's yeah. not just that, but the car company, DeLorean Motor Company, it only existed for like two years. It still exists. Mm -hmm. They don't produce their cars. Five you can still years. buy the parts from them, though. Yeah. They, um, they have like a limited production. Yeah, I mean, it's not John Lore anymore, but it's different. Company. And they also have the the electric model. I don't know if it's the, sold yet. Uh, probably. Maybe. Texas. Uh, but yeah, they were about. out of business, I believe, before Back to Future hit theaters. That's a possibility. Because I, I think it started in eighty two and then it died by like eighty four, yeah. eighty five. I think the controversy with the whole drug thing that have uh, killed it. I don't know I don't what know. it did exactly. It, it just was, it wasn't made well and it was really expensive. Uh, it's still I mean it looks fucking awesome. I can't imagine yeah, driving yeah. one in like eighty like ninety degree weather. I think it would be unbearable. Uh it'd be uh unbearably awesome. Like, Sweating your ass off in an all aluminum car. Yeah. It's a DeLorean. Who gives a shit? Yeah, exactly. My dad had a chance to buy Gun one to once. We yeah. went to we went to his like face? his neighbor's house, and when he was looking at it, I was like, "Dad, you gotta buy this shit. You gotta fucking buy this car." And he he passed on to get a PT Cruiser. I was like, still to this day, I'm like, "What's wrong with you?" What's that uh, uh, guy's name from? I don't know if it's Seventeen again, but it's like this time travel movie. But the, it's like the mm -hmm. kid. Yeah, I think Zac it's Seventeen Efron. again. Yeah, yeah, Zach Efron. He he owns a DeLorean. Does he? Yeah, he does. He I haven't seen that movie fan. since high school, man. I can't. I doubt. Does he? I remember it being a fun movie. It is. I Next, mean, yeah. we'll have to do a podcast. Uh, no. One, one, one year. I'd rather just watch 13 going on 30. That sounds much better. 13 going on 30. Yeah, it's the opposite. Okay. Like, okay, 17 again is big in reverse. Uh -huh. 13 going on 30 is actually big, but with a woman. That's with, uh, what's your face? Uh, Jennifer Garner. Yeah, that's the one. Miss yeah. Batman. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. and chick flicks, man. That's not a chick flick. That's a good movie. It's a romantic comedy. It's one of Mark Ruffalo's uh, early films. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Hulk? Yeah. yeah. You got the Hulk and Elektra in the same movie together? Hey. Hulk smash. You got Judy Greer, who's now in Jurassic World. And uh, Andy nothing. Serkis in one of his actual films where he's actually a person and not a robot or yeah, a monkey. I see these any, any, any more again. 
What, what are you doing? Yeah, what is that? Arrested Development. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Yeah. It's like she has the fake breasts, and it's like yeah. to, uh, the George, like, take a look at these. <laughs> See, that's that's it. And she, like... It's 4.30 in the morning. Well, so we got a couple a other people delirious. in that film. It's a good cast. It's written well. It's one of Judd Winnick's last films. Um, He died shortly after it. Yeah, Judd Winnick, he only he directed a couple things. One of which is Ghost Girlfriend's Past, which is also good. It's a that, re- no, actually, that is a really that's good a movie. good movie, right? Yeah. Like surprisingly good. Yeah. It's a good adaptation of a Christmas Carol. Like, it got a really a lot of flack. No, I mean, Here, I think here's people just judge it on the surface, but no, that's a really funny movie. It's really oh, well written. Maybe that's not Judd Winnick. No, it's it's uh, written by the same guys that wrote The Hangover. Okay, uh, but uh, okay, Jennifer Garner in that film. You know how there's a girl that plays a young version of her yeah. and it looks just like her. Mm-hmm. That's the one who plays her in Thirteen Going on Thirty. Like the recast because of the connection there and so they kind of work together but yeah that movie's good it just it's is fucking Michael Douglas in that movie is he? I, oh yeah he's the dad it's fucking hilarious it's just seen. Matthew McConaughey's good in that yeah it's just on Netflix uh, no oh. no no probably not yeah. highly doubt it no but it's it's actually a good movie it, yeah. yeah it's a good date movie yeah 13 going 30 is more it's better than that one so yeah, did, did, I, did I satisfy your? Uh, did you just back to? No, you didn't get into it. No, no. What is it like? Okay, everyone has like either a film or a TV show or an album or a comic book. You got it's something. Like back to the Future is one that bought, so I, I have think have it's one of the few perfect films, and not just perfect, but it's also a perfect pop culture staple. Um, because it's rare that something is critically acclaimed at that level and at the box office. Yeah. Without being based on a previous property or a, an well, adaptation. There was the, this is back in the 80s, too. You know, Amblin was making a bunch of classics that were original. They weren't based on anything. And now we're trying to recreate that stuff. We're in a, but, we're like, in a really you got, weird, weird time where people are nostalgic for the 80s. You got, like, E.T. and Close Encounters, and then you got Back to the Future. Goonies. Steven Spielberg once said that... Um, Terminator? The, the movie he... Not I'm Amblin. talking about Amblin. I yeah. know, but... Yeah. The movie... And the first Terminator come on He now. was... Most proud of uh, producing. What, what, what are you getting at? That that movie's okay. Terminator Two's the fucking shit. Okay. Okay. Shut the fuck up. Uh. Well, okay. Terminator Two versus Terminator One. Yeah. Um, this is for another time. What were you gonna say? Uh. Steven Spielberg said that the the movie he was uh most proud of producing uh was Back to the Future. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Because I mean he's not gonna say Transformers Two. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah. That movie's awesome. No, <laughs> Dark like the, the Moon. Transformers. That movie's awesome for what it is. Oh, I almost called Dark the Moon number two. I meant Revenge of the Fallen. Making, mm-hmm. making Revenge of the Fallen's so bad it makes Dark the Moon look good. We gotta do an audio Fox commentary for that. Fox. I will try to defend it. Mm-hmm. I will try. I'm down. Yeah, I uh, I have a Twitter where I tweet somewhat frequently. Oh, more so when I'm drunk. I think I did like four tweets in a row last night. Um, which is Brian Gillis, B R Y O N G I L L I S, and it's the same name you can find me on Letterbox, where I do most of my film movies. That's a lie. Every film I watch, rather. Um, and there's some other things. If you shout at me, uh, send us an email. Yeah. Dollar dot reviews at gmail dot com. Seriously, how or, many people are listening? If any, we'd love to hear back from. Or you want to get better at this? Exactly. Or hit us on uh, Twitter. We're not going to stop. No, we're gonna try it doesn't not cost to. us Forever. anything to stop. So. Well, I mean, this is the second season of all reviews. I did stop the first time around. Why did you stop the first time? Well, I mean, the guy that I did it with, he kind of became too cool for me or some shit. Who what knows? A, what a D. Yeah. What a what a D. The, the letter D. Just that, that, the, just the letter D. Nothing else. What a D. I don't know what that means. Yeah, no, <laughs> Never no. mind. But I, that was... right. You can find me on Twitter at S underscore MTX, and you can follow my film diary at letterbox.com slash S underscore MTX. Hamid? Uh, yeah, you can uh, go to my website at hdzee.com. Uh, it's a fun photo blog with some cute writing and uh, some filmography. And uh, you can go to my letterbox, Zordon Lives. Um, it might be sparse on the reviews. I just like, I like this movie. This movie is okay. So, um, yeah. And then Insta and Twitter, but who cares? I'm not going to have to say that right now. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Um, Dope inside out next week for sure. Yeah, maybe. All right, me, me, Earl, and the dying girl. Is this guy coming back? I'm there. I don't know. If you guys want me, I'll be here. We need more guests, I think. More guests, maybe we or should keep it Long Beach exclusive. Ask more people. Could do that. Yeah, yeah, do that. Make that a thing. I don't know who no. else to include. Yeah, do we know? I don't know. No, all the people that are uh, 
yeah, everyone else is just being too awesome, making actual stuff. Yeah, actually and we're doing just, shit. Yeah, no, I, I, I know a couple people I, I get contact. Actually. Yeah. 